l equals past tense. Past tense? If you ever hear someone tell you that, you can be quite sure that the person doesn't really understand the language, even if they're Chinese. 老师 please explain the grammar of l as well as the difference between l and guo. Thank you for the request, Nastya Romanova. l itself is already a massive topic, so for today's episode, let's only look at l. This is going to be a grueling lesson. Are you ready? Let's get started. Look at how simple it is. But if you've learned Mandarin for a while, you probably feel that the more you learn l, the more you don't know it. Just when and how do you use it? Something that was supposed to be simple somehow became a huge entangled mess. Not to worry, we'll tackle it together. Now, first and foremost, let's look at a couple of short, simple sentences to prove that l equals past tense is a misconception that you should abandon once and for all. 五点了，我们是朋友了。Neither means the past, even though l is present. How is that so? Stay tuned. We'll come to that later. Word of caution: In order for you to understand l better or to get through this episode, you have to first chuck away the English paradigm or the paradigm of any language with tenses. It's hard if that has been the only way you looked at languages. But this is a really important point because many Mandarin learners get stuck. Due to simply failing to look at Mandarin the way it is, let's learn Mandarin with a clean slate of mind. So, what is l? There are, broadly speaking, two types of l. The first is called an aspect particle, usually called l one, 动态助词 and the second is called a modal particle, usually called l two, 语气助词 They may look the same, but are actually different creatures. Aspect particle l. One. What is an aspect particle in Mandarin, and what does it do? An aspect particle is placed after a verb, and it expresses the state of the action. In the case of l one, gives us information about the completion of the action. Many people confuse this with tense and think that the completion of an action equals past tense. It's not. In English, the tense tells us whether an action is in the past, present, or future. But in the case of l one. It tells us the state of the completion of the action at a certain point in time. This might be hard to understand, but it will get clearer as we go through the explanation and examples. In case you're wondering, other aspect particles include guo and zhe. Let's look at the traits of l one. There are quite a lot, but the following are the more important ones and more than enough to make you go crazy. Remember, there's still l two. After this, as we go through each of them, try to bear in mind the nature of l one, which is about completion. Gradually, you should be able to understand it better. Aspect marker, not tense marker. Let's look at this sentence. What shula? Now you probably are thinking that this clearly is past tense, but I'm not quite done with explaining yet. Completion of an action does not mean that it is in the past. We have to think of it within the context of the sentence. Let's look at the next one. 我吃了就去上班 As I said, completion does not mean that it has happened. It simply means what it means: completion. And this completion could happen in the past or future. So in this example, l still indicates completion of the verb 吃 but that action of eating has yet to be completed. It simply is saying that when the action of 吃 is complete, I'll go to work. So in fact, in this sentence, I've not gone to work, neither am I done with eating. After verb, before object. In most cases, l one comes after the verb and before the object. Let's tweak the example a little bit more. 我吃了饭就去上班 Here, instead of just the verb 吃 we also have the object 饭 The aspect particle l one comes after the verb and before the object. We don't say 我吃饭了就去上班 Actually, in spoken language, you might hear this kind of structure from time to time, but well, it's not very grammatical. Note that if the verb contains a resultant complement, 结果补语 l one comes after the complement. For example, 我吃完了饭就去上班 Prone to loneliness. This one needs quite a bit of explaining. Again, let's look at example three. Say we have this version of it. 我吃了饭 We have. La one 
after the verb, and before the object, just like what we learnt in the previous point. So it seems okay, doesn't it? The problem is that it ends just like that. This sentence doesn't sound quite complete, as if the speaker has yet to finish speaking. La one enjoy socializing, and it wants more than just an object. Let's look at three ways to make sure that the sentence does not sound unfinished. The first is to have an attributive before the object. In simpler terms, we need to play something before the object to modify it so that it is more specific. This attributive is typically a measure word, an adjective, or a pronoun. 我吃了两碗饭 Here's more examples with different attributives. 我做了很多馒头妹妹吃了我的苹果。她买了很大的房子。The second way to avoid sounding unfinished is having an adverbial adjunct before the verb. 我已经吃了饭。我昨天做了馒头。If you've been paying close attention, you might have guessed a third way to avoid sounding unfinished. That's right, by finishing the sentence with more information, like our previous sentence. 我吃了饭就去上班 If we didn't have an attributive, an adverbial, or a second clause, and left the sentence in three e as it is, I personally wouldn't say that the sentence is terribly wrong. But if someone said this to me, I probably would be left wondering, what exactly is the point you're trying to make? And I would be expecting more from you. It's like a sentence with only the skeleton. Having an attributive, an adverbial, or a second clause fills up the noisy void and thereby making it sound complete. So remember that la one doesn't like being alone with the object. Make sure it gets more company. Once is enough. Typically, in serial verb phrases and pivotal sentences, in which more than one verb is present, we only use la one with the last verb. Let's look at these examples. 我昨天坐地铁去了他家。我让他打扫了孩子的房间。We've looked at cases where we use le one. Now let's move on to look at cases where we usually don't use it. Negative actions. In negative sentences, may is added before the verb, and le one. Has to be dropped. 我没吃。我没做馒头。Do note that 不 is not used to negate the one. Habitual or repetitive actions. This is where a lot of learners make mistakes. In habitual actions, even if the action is done, the one is unnecessary. 小时候我每天吃豆沙包。Even if the occurrence is rare, we don't use it. 小时候，我只是偶尔吃豆沙包。However, if indicating completion is important, the one has to be used. 小时候，我每天都是吃了豆沙包再喝可可。When completion is of no importance, even if the action has been completed, we don't usually use the one if completion is of no importance. This type of sentence is typically seen in reporting or narrating, especially consecutive actions. 他打开门，走进厨房，坐下来，静静的吃饭。On the other hand, if you want to emphasize completion, you can use the one repeatedly. 你今天都做了些什么？洗了衣服，扫了地，买了菜，做了饭，忙得很呢。Emotional or mental verbs. We don't use the one with emotional or mental verbs. Because these verbs are about emotional and mental states, not about completion of actions. 上大学的时候，我们都喜欢那个歌手。我打算继续学习汉语。Non-action verbs. Again, verbs like 是、在、性 have nothing to do with completion, so the one is not used. 那时候他是老师。昨天我在家。Modal verbs, modal verbs like 想、要、能、会、可以 express possibility, ability, or willingness, not completion. So again, the one is not used. 我刚才想吃两碗饭，可是他只给我一碗。
你小时候会说英语吗 ？Are you still surviving? Good. Let's move on to modal particle le two. Although there are many things to bear in mind about le one, fundamentally it only expresses one thing: the completion of an action. Similarly, le two, despite having quite a few meanings on a surface level, has basically one most important underlying feature that you should familiarize yourself with, and that is change. First off. Here's an overview of what we're going to learn about le tu. Some of the following might be baffling to a beginner, especially if you already have le equals past tense mindset. So try to keep in mind its key function of expressing change. Mostly placed at the end of a sentence. This is one easy way to decide whether you're looking at le one or le tu. As we have already seen, le one is in most cases placed after the verb. Le tu, on the other hand, Mostly comes at the end of a sentence. Indicates change. This is the main characteristic of le too. We have to look at this from a broad perspective. What is meant by change? It could be that something has transformed completely into another, or just mildly modified. The change could be sudden or gradual. A new situation has emerged, or a previous condition has disappeared. In any case, the point is that there is change. Often. We can't translate this meaning of change, but the underlying meaning is the situation has become so. And so, depending on the context, some common translations are already, no longer, now, and so on. Let's go back to the two sentences we looked at at the beginning. 五点了，我们是朋友了。Depending on the kind of nuance you want to convey, sentence one A can be translated as it is already five o'clock. And to A, we are already friends, or we've become friends. In case you're still quite baffled, let's compare the following. 五点了，现在五点。They both basically mean the same thing, but we would probably say them under different circumstances. Say you're busy working at the computer and then happen to take a glance at the clock, and suddenly you realize the time. Oh, it's five o'clock. In this case, you would say 五点了 Let's look at another scenario. You're out shopping with your friends, and you all decide that you would go shop for your own stuff before gathering again. You need to fix the time, so you look at your watch and notice it's five o'clock now. In that case, you would say, 现在五点 because you're simply reporting the time. And maybe you would continue with, 我们六点集合吧 Let's gather at six. In case you're wondering, can we combine the two variations and say, 现在五点了 Yes, that works fine. There's no hard and fast rule to this. It just depends on what nuance is needed in that particular situation. Let's look at two A in greater depth. 我们是朋友了 Very often, learners make this kind of sentences, intending to mean we were friends, in the mistaken belief that le means past tense. Let's look at the following to understand this better. 我们以前是朋友，现在不是了 Now, do you see why you should never think of le as past tense? The first sentence without le would become past tense in English, whereas the second with le is present tense. This le tu indicating change is often placed after nouns, verbs, adjectives, modal verbs, and even phrases. Verbs yao and shi are often used with this. We've seen a noun example in one a and a shi example in two a. Let's now look at other cases. 我胖了 This literally means I fat already. I wasn't previously, but now I am. 明天的会议你也得参加。好，知道了。I didn't know previously. Now I know. 明天星期一了。So can we say simply, 明天星期一 Yes, we can. Le adds on a sense of change. Without le, you're simply stating the fact that it is Monday tomorrow. 我有女朋友了。You previously had no girlfriend. Now you've got one. 我不想去了。In this example, with or without le makes quite a bit of difference. Having le here means that you previously wanted to go, but now you've had a change of mind. If you recall, for negatives in le one, we can only use may, not 不 For le two, both 不 and may are often used. Also, we can't use modal verbs for le one, but as you can see here, 
We can use them with la to. 手机没电了 It was battery earlier, but not anymore. 他奶奶身体不好了 His grandmother used to be better in health, but now no longer. I've lumped examples of nouns, verbs, adjectives, modal verbs, phrases into one single section. But if you really want to learn this well, I would suggest learning them one by one so that you get used to the different structures and get a good feel of them. Otherwise, you might end up getting confused. Expresses confirmation of completion of action. Actually, this should also be part of point B, expressing change. But I have chosen to single it out because this feature of la to is probably the most confusing. Remember when we were looking at la one? I said that this sentence is a bit awkward. What should I find? It sounds as if the sentence is half finished. To make it sound complete, we learned earlier that you could either insert an attributive before the object, an adverbial adjunct before the verb, or continue with the second part of the sentence. Now you have yet another way to finish it off nicely. Simply at la to at the end. What should I find? That means in the sentence we have both la one and la to. So ironically, although la one indicates completion, it does not complete the sentence well on its own. As I said before, la one expresses completion, but does not necessarily mean that the action is really complete. La to gives a final confirmation that the action is complete. Actually, in such short sentences, la one can be and is often omitted. So we can simply say, "What you find la." So, how do we reconcile this with the feature of change? La too wraps up the whole sentence before it, indicating that this is a new situation that has emerged. The new situation now is that I've eaten. In English, the sentence is past, but as I've been repeating, it does not mean past tense in Mandarin, even though it looks like the past tense. It basically confirms that an action has been completed, and this is the new situation. I know if this is the first time you're learning this, it might sound a little bit bizarre. And it might take a bit of time for this feature to really sink in. Let's look at another one of our eating examples. 我吃了就去上班 If we affix la to at the end, 我吃了就去上班了 We have the confirmation that everything in this sentence has happened. I ate and I went to work. La to confirms that this is the new situation. Expresses change in quantity. Again, this is about change, so it should come under point B. But because it's a huge topic, I had to separate it. We'll start from something simple. Hai zhe ba sui la. This indicates that there has been change in the age, and now it has reached eight years old. This is in fact the same category as example one A that we looked at. Wu dian la. There's been ongoing change in the time, and now it has reached five o'clock. Let's now look at something more complex using la too. With the complements of quantity and duration, 数量补语，食量补语 If you've learned the complements of quantity and duration, you might have learned that when you have a single l, it means that the action is over, and when you have two of them, it means that the action is ongoing. 我学了两年汉语。我学了两年汉语了。These two examples are commonly found in textbooks to indicate the difference between having one l. And two less. In A, the action of learning is complete, whereas in B, I'm still learning and intend to continue. Let's use a previous example to illustrate this. I ate two meals. As we learned earlier, in order to make the sentence sound complete, we need an attributive before the object, and in this case, the attributive is two meals. So in this sentence, I have eaten two bowls of rice, and the action of eating is complete. Now let's see what happens if we add la to at the end of it. 我吃了两碗饭了 This basically still means that I ate two bowls of rice, but the final la to indicates a change in number, and this is something in progression. I ate the first bowl, and now I've reached the second bowl. Think of the sentence like an open-ended story. In the case of F, 我吃了两碗饭 the action of eating is complete. But in the case of L, 我吃了两碗饭了 the story is to be continued. This person might still want to eat yet another bowl, or he might want to say that he can't eat anymore.
Do you now get what I mean by this is something still in progression? Let's see these two mini stories in action. 今天老板请客，一定吃得很饱吧？是啊，超好吃，我吃了两碗饭。你真能吃啊！是啊，我吃了两碗饭了，再吃一碗应该就饱了。今天我请客，你怎么吃的那么少？再多吃些。不行啊，我吃了两碗饭了，再吃就走不动了。Let's take a breather. You might now be quite overwhelmed by the seemingly inconsistent or even contradictory traits we've seen so far. So we learned earlier that in order to mark an action complete, we simply put la tu at the end. Yet now we've just learned that if we have la tu at the end, it means that the action is not finished. Fret not. It's not contradictory. This new trait that we've just learned pertains to the complements of quantity and duration. Or, to put it in simpler terms, it is when we're talking about how many, how long. Also, abandon the baggage of past tense. Bear in mind the notion of change. This should help prevent you from losing your track. Expresses urging or advice. You might have heard this before. 走了 What do you think this means? Without any context, this could mean that someone is left. If so, it could be part of a dialogue like the following. 小明呢？走了。But it can also be used when urging people to leave. Often, in such cases, the speaker would say the same thing twice or more. 走了，走了。Why can la tu be used for urging people to do something? That's because la tu tells us that the time is coming to do something or to stop doing something. Again, this is a fundamental trait of expressing change. It wasn't time to leave a while ago, but now the situation has changed, and it's time to leave. This is a good example to look at how Mandarin is so highly dependent on context. The action of "zao" could be anybody, including the speaker. It might mean that the speaker himself is leaving right now, as the subject "wo" can be omitted. "Wo zao la," "zao la." You can imagine that the speaker is announcing that it's time for him to leave. As I said. Without a specific subject, the action of "zo" could be referring to anybody or even anything. Say we've been waiting anxiously for the bus to move, so finally, when it moves, we might say in relief, "zo la zo la." So, without context, we don't know for sure who the subject is. Not only that, the time of action is also unclear. The action of leaving might have been over for some time, like A, or it might be going to happen the very next moment, like B and C. Or it could also be happening right this moment, like D. Are you at this point wondering if machine translation is ever possible? Anyway, let's look at a couple more examples. 别哭了，吃饭了。Wait, doesn't this last one look familiar? Yes, we saw something similar earlier. 我吃饭了。Now that we've learned that la tu can also mean it's time to do something or to stop doing something. Do you see what other possible meaning this sentence could have? Right, it could mean I'm going to eat now. Perhaps a bit of context to make it easier to understand. Let's look at this dialogue. 我还没好呢，你等等我，我们一起吃饭。好，我等你。再等你，我饿死了。不等了，我吃饭了。Fixed constructions. And then there are fixed structures with la tu, which are a lot easier since they're set forms. Here are a few most common structures. Tai something la, although the direct translation is tu something, it can be translated several ways, including very, so, awfully, and so on. Note that this can be used for both positive and negative contexts. Now to go is too late. We'll go tomorrow. 你做的馒头太好吃了，我真想天天吃。Something 死了 ，This is very similar to 太 something 了 ，except that it's a lot more colloquial and has a stronger intensity. It literally means something to death and can mean so, but often we use it just for exaggeration. Compared to 太 something 了 ，something 死了 mostly has negative connotations. But sometimes, to express the intensity, it can also be used in a positive way. 
，这孩子，我说什么都顶嘴，气死我了。今天终于看到偶像，开心死了。要 something 了 ，this indicates that something is about to happen. Adjectives and nouns are also possible, but verbs are the most common in this structure. 要上课了，我们回教室吧。他要哭了，你别骂他了。Finally, let's review our very first eating example. 我吃了。Now that we've done both la one and la two, does this now make you confused? Is this la one or la two? It's actually both. It is la one expressing the completion of the action, and also at the same time. La two confirming the completion of it. I can't list everything about la, but the above are the most important traits. If you understand the above well, you should be able to use la pretty well. It might take you quite some time, but don't worry. Take things one step at a time, and come back to review this whenever you are unclear. I've created a summary of this, so do check it out on my website. Don't forget to try the exercise and look out for my next video, which will be on the difference between la and guo. Till then, 再见。<laughs>